Francis here from RC Review and today we're gonna fulfill some of your requests and do a part by part analysis of this amazing low CG crawler belly dragger this this G speed vehicle that my friend Vu built So what we're gonna do is we are going to just break it down piece by piece, open this up, and give you part numbers uh, from for each one that we do. So we are gonna try to give you kind of a bird's eye view of what it takes to build a crawler like this because I feel that's one of the biggest problems. You don't know what's involved, how many parts you need to buy, which parts, and you don't know how much it's gonna cost. Is it 500 or 1,000 or 250? So that's what we'll try to demystify for you. But first, let me just throw Vu a kind of a, a, a hardball question or a softball question and say, what got you into it? What made you decide I wanna, I wanna do uh, a crawler like this one? Well, you know, it all happened um, just one night at JJ Customs. We were doing a, just a shop competition. Mm -hmm. And I was like, dude, what, is, what are these machines, you know? like. And at the what time, were you, what were you driving at the time? I had um, an Element Sendero, Enduro Sendero, very capable so rig. It's, it was a good rig, and my buddy had a G Speed. He's down here, and he's like, "Hey, you know what you got to do? You got to drop that body." And I was like, <laughs> "What? What are you talking about? Let's cut it off then." So we dropped oh, the body. Cut, you cut it off we, right there. Yeah, right, right there. We chopped the post, dropped the body. We were just moving, and I was just like. What is going on? And so was it improving? Was his machine it, that much better than yours? It, it was, and I was competing against my other friend with the stock Enduro as well. Mm -hmm. And the drop was like huge. And then that's actually the night I met Gabe and the G-Speed guys. Okay. And I was like, dude, this guy's so focused. Like the way he's moving all yeah. crazy and close. And I was like, okay, cool. Let me, let me see what I can do with my Enduro. Right. And... I did what I can do to it, but it wasn't enough. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, uh, and yeah, so, you know. right. somewhere here. We're 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 gonna we're gonna use some pictures. Every time he showed up with us, man, this enduro met the hatchet. <laughs> so you know, we had five minutes a lap before we even started crawling because this enduro was chopped up. Uh, this is mine. Modified it. It's pretty nice, right? And pretty nice, huh? Yeah. But yours is nicer. I don't know. <laughs> Mine's a freak. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and here, up, yeah. but it was performing. Uh, so that that was yeah. the beginning, huh? Yep. Part of it. So this is the machine that you saw on our video perform like no other, and that was one take, just ten minute session. You saw what it was capable of. You wouldn't believe what else he can do on that park. You know, lines that you didn't think existed. It's not a problem. So let's describe it. Starting from uh, from the top, from the body and whatnot. Yeah, so the body, it's a, a power wagon, a pro line body, um, just basically half cab. Um, I was going to do the, the rear, but I just like that whole flatbed look back here, so mm -hmm. I kept that off. Uh, and then, uh, just to give you an idea of what's involved with this uh, with this project, you optimize everything. So when you, oh no, just leave it. Oh, okay. when, you, um, when you buy the power wagon body, it's a pro line. A trail, a trail, trail crawler body. It's like this. Pretty much try to keep it uh, somewhat scale a little bit. Uh, a little, a little bit of fender there. Yeah, because this is still used for a, a class two mm -hmm. comp rig, um, but it might go on to a cheater rig. Um, yeah. So that's why I have the carbon fiber on this one. This is pretty much going to be my lightweight rig. Gotcha. With the carbon wheels and everything. Um, What's really cool too, I found this. Uh, he, they found an innovative way to mount the body, mm -hmm. which is uh, they put some holes here, guide holes on the back, and and two pins here. So always the body mounting is yeah. is kind of ignored. Um, so it just shakes around, but this one is a very secure body mount, very low and secure. 
So let's describe the build and we're gonna have part by part links on this so it will help you out. It will help out the 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 manufacturers. I'm not gonna get uh, any commission out of it because they don't sell through AMA and they, they sell direct. But you know anything I could do we could do to the community, uh, small biz small small business guys will uh, will be good for the hobby. I got the G speed uh the rails, um, if you, they do offer the kit that comes with the sliders, um, the skid, pan hard mount, uh, but this one is just piece by piece that I've done. Mm -hmm. um, so the so the so the rails is the heart of the system, right? It's it's what defines the body. Yeah, and it puts the uh, if you look at the uh, how it's pressed forward, like it's a very aggressive slant. Mm -hmm. So it pushes everything down down and forward. Uh huh. Yeah. So it's not only low, it's slanted as well? Mm -hmm. The yeah. belly is slanted? Yeah. Why not that like this? Why is it like that? Well, if you go like that, when you're crawling eventually, if you're going up, mm -hmm. it's going to send it way back. Right. So you want to push push it forward and down. And you're going to get, get hung up. Yeah. Um, so you're not concerned about the entry. Yeah. You're concerned about the yeah. exit that you mm -hmm. get out of you get out of a jam. Yeah. And then and when you go you... down there, we also have the sliders. These are actually Selena sliders on here. Mm -hmm. And it has a little shape so it can just kind of skid right over right um and then that's where you want to have these high um high links these are from hardcore rc mm -hmm. uh, it brings the links up a bit so there's more clearance we try to get it above the pumpkin right pan. um and then that also brings up to the shocks we have the shocks kind of pointed inwards mm -hmm. instead of straight up and down um whole idea is just the whole inertia and just the whole energy that from rebounding, I right. want to kind of keep it planted, so that helps out a bit too. Um, also, lowering the suspension even more. Yeah, yeah. you you, uh, you you gotta lay it down to lower the, the whole mm -hmm. chassis. Um, that, that that really uh, determines your ride height. Yeah. So the shocks that you went with, what are they, and uh, where did you go? These are Voodoo's. They normally come with the dual stage spring. Mm -hmm. um, when I first had them in there, I didn't have any oil, so I was still kind of in the learning process. Uh, I swapped out to just some single rated springs. Um, that's when I changed the oil in there. So I'm using actually 42.5. Mm -hmm. um, so it just helps dampen everything down, just slow everything Oof, down. Wow. So I inverted the shock, bring the whole um, CG down. Uh huh. Uh, anything you can get down. Anything that low, lower the CG, uh. <laughs> Yeah. Upside down shocks. Upside down flow because pump. the because the the top is heavier than the uh, yeah. than the bottom. Mm hmm. Okay, so um, cover the shocks. Yeah, but and then we got that. These what? are stock uh, wall boards, uh, drive shafts from the Axial. Wild board drive shaft mm -hmm. from Axial. Mm hmm. And let's see what else you got on here. What are the axles? Uh, I got some beef tubes up front. No, no, the the um, the actual oh, axles. The, the AR forty fours. Yeah. So AR forty fours from Axial. Yeah. Mm -hmm. AR forty four base. Why did you go with those? Uh, that's what came with my builder's kit. Okay. <laughs> um, got some options to go portals. I just went with what I had. Yeah. And it seems to be doing the job for Is me. Is it keeping up with uh, what are some what are some other people getting? Uh, right now they're doing. Oh, this is the most popular. Vanquish. The, the F9s. Mm -hmm. um, right now, there's they're playing around with the AR45s on the uh, 10.3s. Right. Um, Portals, yeah. There's a lot of fooling around with that right now, but I'm just gonna. This is the tried and true. Just gonna stick to this for now. You know, they're help, small. Helps um, out with the budget. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah they're small and uh, they're not too much in the way. Yeah. And I think you you change the, the caps to metal. Yeah. So on the front, um, so I have it loaded up with plenty of brass. Mm -hmm. On the diff, the shock links, beef patties. I am running some Tech Factory Racing carbon wheels. Mm -hmm. uh, so you got the plates and all that. Yeah. Uh, just like with biking, you want rotational mass to be kind of oh, light. So there's a lot of biking okay. influence in here. <laughs> I see. Yeah. So you can spin up. Yeah. So you want that wheel speed. A little um, faster. Mm -hmm. Instant. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, so instead of getting heavy ass wheels, yeah. You get light wheels. Yeah. Although the concept is still the same with you know having brass yeah. down there. That's why you have the brass in the uh, mm -hmm. the covers. What do you call these? Uh, uh beef patties. I mean uh, what what part is that? The wheel hubs or something? Uh it is the the hex. Okay. Yeah, the, so hex I is like the hex. Is a whole yeah. 
big weight. Mm -hmm. So it's it's heavy, but it's not rotational. Yeah, and then um, and then I also got the new uh, Ot Six Halos in here. Mm -hmm. So I'm running the I believe it's the blue in the front and the red in the back. Uh, helps stiffen up the the setup in the tires. Right. So these are on the Voodoo KLR Reds. Vo Voodoo KLR Reds. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I noticed Ot Six. A lot of these guys run Ot Six. Very mm -hmm. expensive tire that's that's not easy to tune uh, they have to be optimized for the vehicle with weights but uh, something really technical is the foams huh? yeah it has to absolutely match yeah. the foams and they're doing not only dual stage foam but triple stage foam sometimes yeah that's the uh, they, they had run triple stage and now it's pretty much back to dual uh 4.7 inch tires yeah and what is the logic for that and why, why is it not uh 4.2 uh this is more of a Class two, the four point mm -hmm. two four four one nines is more class one. Yeah, that's a class one requirement. Um, this is just a little bit bigger. Just I don't know. I guess you could be like your big monster truck yeah. out on the road. Yeah, you know? more clearance, mm -hmm. more uh, more burly. Yeah, mm -hmm. this is what you come roaring down to the shopping center. You know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got the Salinas that's driving my motor here mm -hmm. um, so that's your transmission that's my transmission uh -huh. um, the 30 percent it's roughly 30 35 percent overdrive mm -hmm. uh, it's pushing the three brothers yellow jacket the 2000 kv 2000 kv yeah. okay i uh an uh, outrunner motor outrunner very light yeah something like 100 grams mm -hmm. uh, but uh, with a lot of power a lot of control a little bit of noise mm -hmm. It was just solid, you know, like it's a solid transmission. Wow, really? Yeah. yeah. Can handle the power. And look at the level. I'll have close ups, but the level of the transmission is so low. And you have a, the big spur gear here, mm -hmm. but it's plastic, it's light, you know, so you're not, it's not costing you a lot of weight. But the, the motor and the transmission are slammed into the belly, which is already low. So uh, that, that definitely yeah. It, yeah. It delivers uh, yeah. dividends. To huh? lighten that up, I got my. The micro running there, keeping everything light on this rig. So the castle, the castle Mamba, Mamba Micro X, X um, and then a small re a small receiver. Mm -hmm. Yeah, both, so. both waterproofed, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we did uh, just open it up, do some conformal coating, mm -hmm. help with the uh, the water protection. Obviously, the the Micro X doesn't give a lot of power to the servo. How do you, do you need a lot of servo torque and how do you power that thing? Yeah, so to get that, I got my Three Brothers G13 direct port, uh, direct port, like talking nitrous, <laughs> uh, direct power. So instead of running a BEC, which I still don't know how that works, with <laughs> regulating and all that stuff. You know, the I, black hole of wiring and it's BEC. Just, you know, less numbers I got to deal with, the better. So it's just direct power. It just pulls from your uh, LiPo. So right here is your wire. Yeah. And it's just a cleaner job. I don't need to run it into a balance port. Right, which so, is what I do right mm -hmm. now. So just one plug and you're done. Um, yeah, so this thing is just mass, massive torque. So the direct power servos are just monsters. What did, how, did, well, how did you mount those uh, servos? Are, is that a... Uh, the servo, it's a, it's a Team Garage Hack. Team dual, Garage Hack. Yeah, dual mm -hmm. servo mount. Mm -hmm. uh, just put it in between the brace. Uh, in there, I also have a, a spacer because it's a 67 mil, uh -huh. and this chassis, I'm running a 7 mil spacer, so it just kind of fills up the space there. Seven, 70 mil? 70 mil, mm -hmm. yeah. So these chassis braces, where mm -hmm. do they come from? They are from Hardcore Links as well. Okay. Um, they also did my offset pan hard mount up front. If you look at it, it's bent up there. Oh for, yeah, yeah. Just yeah. to kind of maximize that clearance above yeah. the uh, the diff. Um, yeah, they make all sorts of stuff out there for a lot of vehicles. So. Mm -hmm. um, it's a good guy. Uh, those are stainless. They also come in titanium as well. Mm -hmm. And then most of my hardware is all stainless uh, from Team K and K. Um, Which are the Team K and K parts right here? So all the hardware here, like all the mul shock bolts mounts, and screws, the uh, spacers. Uh, so when you build a kit, they do have a package that it leans towards uh, like a particular type, like an SEX Ten Two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but I opted to just get like a bulk kit with multiple screws because with the custom build, 
everything's a little mix match. Ah, uh, right, right, So right. You not every build is gonna look the same. You don't know exactly. Um, mm -hmm. Like when I pop my hood, and I pop someone else's hood, like, whoa, what's this? Yeah. You know? Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, everyone's got their own little flavor. So before we get into that, uh, the battery, where do you mount it and how does it stay on? So battery I have mounted, it's on a, just a piece of Velcro. Mm -hmm. uh, if you okay. do get Velcro, I just, just go to Home Depot and just get the outdoor extreme, like industrial Industrial, weight. industrial Velcro. Yeah, and just slap it a little piece on the, the battery, boom, yeah. you're all set. For the most part, it stays on unless it's some hard impact. Yeah. It may come off, but other than that, it's no all need good. For, no need for straps, huh? No. Nah. So the battery, I noticed you guys run small batteries. Mm -hmm. How how small do you go and how many uh, cell and all that? I'm running uh, 850 milliamps. Uh, mm -hmm. I believe it's a 75 discharge. Mm -hmm. uh, for this rig, it's 3S. On my class one, I'm running 4S. Okay, so at least 3S. Yeah. See, nobody does 2S, waste of time. Yeah. Uh, because you know you, you could use that 33% extra power. Mm -hmm. 4S on the other one, huh? Yeah. So 850 milliamp hours, it's a small, small teeny battery. How long does that last you know for you? It lasts quite a bit. An hour? Yeah, probably a good good 45 to an hour. So, But right now, I think it's set up. It's pretty sweet. dialed. Uh, it's sweet right now, where I kind of don't want to touch it. Uh-huh. So we've covered, it looks, it looks well used, mm -hmm. but no hang-ups here, huh? Not for the most. The only hang-up, I would say, Sometimes it's the brass. Yeah. Oh, the um, brass uh, is a softer metal. Yeah. So it and the plastic slide. plastic slides a lot better. Mm -hmm. uh, the brass, sometimes you got to tweak it a little bit, you know, that little bit of ch -ch -ch, and just right. to get it over that crack and all. You know what I hear is um, from Randy. Randy built our materials guy. Mm -hmm. He says the softer the metal, the more it's going to hang up. Yeah. So any kind of aluminum, brass aluminum is bad any kind of um, brass, brass is soft metal, it'll just hang up. And so the best ones are, I go, what's, what's good then? He goes, he goes steel, like stainless steel, a really hard steel is good. Mm -hmm. uh, it'll, it'll, nothing will stick to it. Yeah. And then some plastics as well. You know? um, and then today I was just thinking about it, like how can I make this even slicker, you know? Yeah. And I know, well with biking, what, what is it? They use spam or something? Yeah. Like I was like, man, should I try it? I Pam, don't know. Pam. Pam. Yeah. <laughs> spam. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, just any any sort of advantage like that goes on in my head sometimes. Like, Ooh, should I try it out? All right. Anything else we missed on this on this nice uh, build? Have you do you know approximately how much? You know, it would cost a uh, a person from the ground up to ground to, up to, to duplicate this thing with with yeah. with the, with a motor electronic. It might it might be in the seven hundred. Seven hundred, yeah. Um, no radio, but yeah, but motor and uh, mm -hmm. and servo. It's about seven hundred. I would say yeah, rough. It's an interesting facet of RC crawling, and I think what I love about RC crawling the most is there's so many different areas that it's going through, and you know, one one is the trail. Centered at the trail scale crawler, you can have the, you can have the the six by six, you know, this one. You can have the, you can have the micro, um, you can have the the comp crawlers. But this is just one avenue of of crawling that is a, a kind of an ultimate pursuit for performance, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Like no holds. You want to hang out with the big boys, yeah. you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But um, yeah, I would say if you have a, a stock SCX-10 II, try it out. Just get the rails yeah, and see if that makes a difference for you, you know? Right. And just change it piece by piece because you have a rig that's already running. Right. Um, or yeah. even better, you have one that's sitting on the shelf, like me, over there, that blue one, sitting on the shelf for the year and not doing anything. You know, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm playing with some other kids. Yeah. So give it some life, mm -hmm. you know, and then maybe a, all of a sudden your, your SEX 10 kit is beating your Vanquish. Yeah. And it's good to go back to that and see how you can drive. Exactly. Well, cool. Yeah. Thank, thank you for showing us to us. Uh, uh, if you want to buy this, uh, Boo's going to have some links on his Instagram. Oh, watch out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can find it here, your site. <laughs> Support your local hobby shop. <laughs> oh my god. Dang, that thing is, look at that thing, man. That's like, 
And before they, people ask me like, what is, do you have a winch? I go, what are you yeah. talking about? <laughs> I don't got a winch on this thing. This is just to hold my that's body not, that's in. A body holder. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah.